Good afternoon everyone. I'd like to start by acknowledging the traditional custodians of this land, the Wallamadigal clan of the Darug Nation. I'd also like to pay respects to Elders both past, present and emerging and extend that respect to the other Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people present and watching with us today. Welcome to the 2020 Spring Garden Competition Online Awards Ceremony. This event has a long and proud history in the City of Ryde, running for over 30 years. Although many challenges have been thrown upon us this year, there have certainly been a lot of opportunities at home to tend our gardens and to use it as a time to keep active, keep creative and establish a space of relaxation. As is the case this year, this competition aims to showcase these amazing spaces that have brought encouragement and joy to many of our locals. From edible gardens to large gardens, these all reflect the outstanding efforts from our community and show how gardening is there to improve the environment in our local area and improve individual well-being. To open the awards presentations, we'll begin with the announcement of the winners of the local school gardens category. This is one of my favourites. So in third place, we have Ride Secondary College. In second place, we have Good Start in West Ride. And first place goes to Our Lady Queen of Peace in Gladesville. This entry was a very well designed edible garden with a good cross section of vegetables and citrus. There's also been active pupil engagement with this project from all years across the school. Congratulations. Okay, so the next category of awards is non-residential gardens. Third place goes to Macquarie University Community Garden. Congratulations. Second place goes to Baptist Care Willandra Village. And first place is Squireville Complex. This garden came with a lot of constraints due to new developments around it, but despite these constraints, Matthew and his team did a very good job. The two very old fig trees in particular, a testament to the ongoing care and attention they receive. Congratulations. We'll now show a short video on native gardening. It's called Amongst the Native Plants at Eden Gardens, presented by Melanie Athen. Hi everyone, my name is Mel. I'm the plant buyer here at Eden Gardens. Today we're going to be celebrating some of the best native and habitat friendly gardens in the Ride area, which is really exciting for me. Native plants are super, super important to me and to our ecosystem, um, and they're really enriching to the garden. Um, native plants are obviously really striking in their flowers and their foliage. Um, they come in all different shapes and sizes. You have things like your kangaroo paw here, which is really um, structural and gives a brilliant colour pop. They're also great for pots, so if you don't have a lot of room, these are the guys for you. Um, and things like lamandra, which are just a classic, but they come in so many different forms and are super fine or super thick um, in their foliage. Um, so really great options um, for smaller spaces too. Um, native plants also provide a huge range of habitat and food for our native wildlife and key pollinators. So things like birds and bees, they love to get stuck into your buttle brushes um, here, which have a lovely a red uh, flower and our grevilleas which are super nectar rich so lots of food for your birds um, and these guys can grow into a hedge or you can keep them lower so really um, versatile. Um, also it's important to provide homes for all sizes of pollinators and animals um, so providing larger things like this is great but also having lower growing um, ground covers are important as well for smaller things to hide in. So your chrysocephalum here, which is this beautiful ground cover with these little button-like flowers and a silver foliage, so great contrast. And scavola, which is a fantastic coastal succulent ground cover, just a huge carpet of flowers. So really great. These are all drought tolerant, low maintenance, made for the Australian landscape. Um, it, this will really help reduce our um, 
footprint and our um, water usage, um, which is key for helping the environment out. Um, if you want to find out how you can include natives in your garden, come and see us. We've got a huge range here and we're happy to help you out and find um, a native plant for your space, no matter what the size. Next, we have the awards for the native and habitat friendly gardens. In third place, Paul Sanders. Congratulations. In second place, we have Pamela Reeves. And drum roll, in first place, the habitat. This lovely and generous community garden has a great diversity of plants and is maintained really well. All plants are appropriate to the site and other areas in which they are to be planted. It also provides a great habitat for native wildlife and one of my favourites too. Congratulations. We now have the awards for our amazing bush care sites. In second place, we have the Meadowbank Bush Care Group. And in first place, we have the Sugarloaf Point Bush Care Group. Congratulations and thank you to all our bush care volunteers for all the hard work they do every year. We'll now take you to another video on herb and vegetable gardening presented by Tim Robson from Eden Gardens. Hi, my name's Tim uh, and welcome to my favourite place in my favourite place. So we're in the kitchen garden uh, at Eden Gardens and, uh, and now I stand next to my favourite vegetable. So this is a fantastic um, vegetable that very few people grow these days but it looks fantastic in the garden and it's a really good feed. And this one, so this is an artichoke and we're 20 minutes away in a, in, in a, uh, a boiling pot from an absolutely fantastic feed. Because it's so um, architectural, you can fit that anywhere in your, in your garden. It could be in the front garden or it could be in the veggie garden. Um, but there's so many herbs and veggies that are really popping, particularly with all this lovely rain that we've had. Oregano, chilies, absolutely fantastic. So, okay, and as you can see, um, a vegetable garden doesn't need to be um, uh, ugly. You, you can have lots and lots of flowers, and the, the flowers actually help with beneficial insects, which keep the, uh, the nasty insects, the insects you don't want, uh, down. And some of them are actually edible. The, the nasturtiums are absolutely fantastic. Um, and what we're going to do now is just take an early crop from this zucchini. Beautiful. In fact, it's on the way to turning into a zucca with all this rain. Again, getting a bit bigger. Might have a little bit of salad. So these lovely um, and so easy to grow. These um, multi-cut lettuces. The ones where you just pull the leaves from the outside, and then they magically grow back. So that you can do this many times. Throw a few little flowers in there, and that'll be a, a, a nice salad. And then what I thought I'd, I'd do and and a great thing for you guys to do at home is um, putting in some fun things for the, for the kids. So I mean, they, they like this sort of stuff, but little cherry tomatoes that grow quickly and, and very, um, uh, very productive. And then some slightly strange ones, but I can guarantee kids love these. This is, this is called French sorrel. Tastes very lemony. Kids absolutely love this. Um, won't eat too much of it, but you, you can throw it to the salad, but they, they really love that lemony tang. And then stevia. So stevia, you know, for mum and dad, you can have that in your, in your, your coffee to, um, you know, to give you some sweetness, but the kids love this sweet leaf. So, so nice and sweet. So pot those in the garden so you, you'll get a lot of interest from the, from the kids. So, um, and it's just so easy to plant these things in. Um, literally, you can just, if you've got your nice prepared soil, pop them in, water them, and they can get the kids out with their watering cans, and uh, it's, it's so easy. So um, come in and we can help you design the right garden for your, for your family, uh, and you can have beautiful, a beautiful garden like this. All right, the next category of awards is our Very Yummy Edible Gardens Awards. We'll begin with a highly commended award for Philip Shaw.
In third place, we have, once again, the Macquarie University Community Garden. Congratulations. In second place, Tony Butteris. And a huge congratulations to our first place winner, Alexander Jurjev. Alexander has created a real gem of a garden. These edibles are interesting, unusual, varied and plentiful. His interest in health has meant that the plants are meticulously researched, propagated and maintained. Next, we have awards for small courtyard gardens. Once again, so many entries, hard to choose. We've gone with a highly commended award and that goes to Gemma Rollo. In third place, we have Betty Reynolds. Congratulations, Betty. In second place, we have Kimberly Dreyer. And in first place, the winner is Angelina Chi. Angelina has a lovely garden divided into suitable areas of interest. There's an interesting diversity of plants and all areas are, of course, beautifully maintained. A wonderful balance of edible, native and ornamental plants are displayed using many recycled materials. Congratulations once again. So before we go on to the final category, uh, please sit back and enjoy a video on the display gardens which is presented by Meredith Curtin of Eden Gardens. My name's Meredith Curtin and I'm a horticultural journalist and curator at Eden Gardens. I'm here in the display gardens and I'd like to entice you all to follow me down here into the very bottom of the garden. I'm standing here at the creek. Now the creek is like the beating heart of Eden Gardens. It's where we recycle all of our water. It's captured from the roof and from many of the gardens and then it's channeled down through here where it loses its sediment and its extra fertiliser and things and ends up down in our beautiful reservoir that was designed by John Chinkfield. Apart from the water feature, there's a beautiful bride lawn where you can obviously get married or have a function. There's eight individual <laughs> exhibition beds, each with its own character. There's an Asian garden, an edible garden, a native and cottage garden, so you can find little vignettes that you might be able to take home and use at your own place. We also have a beautiful forest and some edible garden sections. It's really a place of learning as well as a place of discovery. The good thing about looking at other people's display gardens is that you can really learn something. I mean, if it can grow here, chances are it can grow at your place. So come and discover the gardens at Eden. All right, here we go. The final awards for the ceremony are our much coveted large garden category. Once again, we had so many fantastic entries, so it was too hard to choose just three. So we've gone with a highly commended award again and highly commended award for large gardens this year goes to Douglas Grant. Thanks for your entry, Douglas. In third place, we have Don Pickens. In second place, we have Angela Thomas. Congratulations, Angela. And here we are, the winner of our Large Garden Award for 2020 is Anne Johnson. Congratulations, Anne. This is a garden with great diversity, displaying plants in excellent vigour. Anne has created a place that is both stimulating and soothing, with a pleasing range of colours and textures. Congratulations. So folks, that concludes our presentations this afternoon. Congratulations, of course, to all the winners today, and make sure you check out the City of Rides website for more information on this year's competition, including photos from today's awards ceremony. Thank you all at home for tuning in to our online awards ceremony this year. And again, I'd love to thank our sponsor Eden Gardens for their ongoing contribution and commitment to this event over the years. And of course, our professional garden judges 
Pat Holcroft and Carmel Quill for all their efforts throughout the competition. Finally, I'd like to thank all the participants who entered this year's competition. Winners, those who've just sent in entries, you make our city more beautiful, you make our environment better. Thank you. We look forward to seeing all the entries for the 2021 edition and hopefully we can have this event in person again next year. Until then, stay safe and thank you.